Hello everyone. Today I will summarize the first section of the USMLE Physiology Distribution of Body Fluids. First thing we will explain the difference between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid in terms of the distribution of body fluids. Body fluids, two-thirds of it is in the intracellular space and one-third is in the extracellular space. The osmotic pressure is the movement of fluids from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. Osmotic pressure has a formula. You can say that it's about two times sodium, but in case of different pathologies, we should add the BUN and glucose. So the formula would be osmotic pressure equals two times the sodium plus BUN over 2.8 plus glucose over 18. We will give now examples to make it clearer the difference between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid in terms of the osmolarity and the movement of fluids through them. What will happen if the extracellular fluid osmolarity increases? The fluid would go from the intracellular space to the extracellular space. As we've mentioned, it goes from a low concentration to a high concentration and vice versa. The units of the concentration which is the osmotic pressure is milliosmoles or milliosmoles per liter. The normal osmolarity is 300 milliosmoles. It is 300 milliosmoles in the intracellular space and 300 milliosmoles in the extracellular space. Why is this? To have a net body fluid movement of zero but when there is a disturbance of this osmolarity, there is a body fluid movement. The picture you see is on the x-axis we have the volume and the y-axis we have the concentration of the solute and we have the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid. The first example. What will happen if a patient comes with hemorrhage? Hemorrhage, there is a loss of isotonic fluid in the case of hemorrhage or diarrhea or vomiting, the same things will happen. We will speak about what will happen to the extracellular fluid volume, the intracellular fluid volume and the body osmolarity. So in case of a patient coming with hemorrhage, there is a loss of isotonic fluid, so you would expect first of all a decrease in the extracellular fluid volume. And there is no change in the osmolarity. So the body osmolarity, there is no change, and the intracellular fluid volume, also no change. The second example is the loss of hypotonic fluid in case of dehydration, diabetes insipidus, or alcoholism. All of these examples, they have in common the loss of hypotonic fluid. So, from the word loss of hypotonic fluid, we understand that there is a decrease in the extracellular fluid volume. But beware, this is a tricky question because in dehydration the body loses the water but on the opposite side it retains the sodium. So the extracellular fluid volume decreases but the extracellular fluid volume osmolarity also increases. And thus the body osmolarity would increase and the intracellular fluid volume would decrease as it moved from the intracellular space to the extracellular space. What would happen to a patient who was given isotonic saline? First thing, because it's isotonic saline, so what would only change is the extracellular fluid volume. Nothing more. What about the gain of hypotonic fluid or hypotonic saline, which is the same thing as water intoxication? The gain of hypotonic saline, the word gain meaning the increase in the extracellular volume and because it's hypotonic so the extracellular fluid osmolarity would decrease and as we've mentioned the movement is from low to high concentration so it would enter from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid. To summarize this, the extracellular fluid volume would increase because there is a gain the, the body osmolarity would decrease because it's hypotonic and the intracellular fluid volume would increase because 
at the beginning we said hypotonic so it moves from the extra to the intra cell the last case for today is the gain of hypertonic fluid is the same thing as the gain of hypertonic manitol so the word gaining means an increase in the extracellular fluid volume and hypertonic means an increase in the extracellular osmolarity the movement would be from the intracellular to the extracellular and in summary so the extracellular fluid volume because it's gaining would increase the body osmolarity would increase because it's hypertonic and the intracellular fluid volume would decrease because it's from the low which is the intracellular to the high which is the extracellular volume thank you for watching please if anyone didn't understand anything to send me a comment or to send me on my email all the best